Okay, so this morning what we're going to do is harvest some no-dig potatoes and then put the leeks in straight after. There's no veg prep in between, in fed, uh, bed prep in between, so we'll show you exactly how to do it and how easy it is. So, I've got my knee here because my knees. So all we do on these is just pull, twist that out. the plant out, leaving some of the roots in. These are charlottes, so they're second early potatoes. Oh, wait, wait, just run your fingers through. Getting a fair crop off them, then, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, some are small, but they're only some potatoes, so they seem to be doing okay. I'm happy with what we've got. This is just off one plant. If you to miss any, would they re reproduce for next year? Yeah, yeah. But all you do is just work soil the compost like this pulling any out there's no fork involved no spade compost quite warm then it's quite nice actually and considering the fact we haven't had much rain it's very overcast today mm. forecast rain today but it's quite moist mm. it's quite good compost mm. and these have had no feeds whatsoever so that's just off one one plant so then we go to the next one. I don't think there'll be much on this because it's only a small plant. But then we never know. Some are very small but very tasty. We've already had two plants off here. We've had them for teas. Lunches. Yeah, I didn't think there'd be much off that one. It's very, very small. There's another very small one here. So you just twist the plant out, leaving the majority of the roots in. And that's feed then for the worms, microorganisms for the next crop, which are going to be leaks on here. Well, considering this is the very first year we've done the no-dig and I didn't really know what to expect on this, I'm quite happy with the results we've had so far. And as I say, I haven't done any weeding on this patch at all with the potatoes and these are, I've just pulled two weeds out when I first started. But there's no weeds inside there. So I'll just go the other side. Pull this one out. Just so you can see. Twist it round. Twist the plant round so you're leaving all the small roots in. There was an abundance on this one. But since we've been doing this no dig plot, um, the amount of people on this allotment site have been watching what I'm doing and everybody was waiting to see what's going to happen with my potatoes. I haven't had to ridge anything up at all. Nothing, none of these have been ridged up in any way. I haven't had to add any more compost 
um, because the potatoes are showing through the tops and there was only six inches of soil, six inches of compost put on originally. <clears throat> it's so easy to work through with your fingers and you, your hands don't get muddy. Unless it's rained of course. <laughs> well yeah, yeah, obviously. And as I say, these have had no feeds in any way or form. And then the tops of the leaf. potatoes will just go in. There's a weed, which isn't very, uh, you don't find them very often on the dig. We've got a fair few there. Well, these are quite nice sized potatoes actually, for, um, for second early Charlotte's. Mm. And I think we'll just pause it there because the kettle's boiling like mad. I'd like to go make a cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> so we've been rained off for a little while. It's pouring down out there. So Jeanette's made us a nice cup of coffee. And we're sitting in the greenhouse. And all the tomatoes <laughs> drinking our cup of coffee till the rain goes off. If it goes off, hopefully. Well, I'm hoping so. I've got to get the leaks in. So we'll leave it there until we can get going again. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Go the rain's not, uh, oh, it doesn't not seem me. to be stopping, so I'm having a cup of coffee. Might as well, while we're in the greenhouse, just show you around the greenhouse a little bit. Um, we've got the Alicante tomatoes in here. Um, the tomatoes are the only plants that we've lost during the hard frost in uh, April. Even though, even though we covered them every night in here with fleece and it's been really hot during the day, it did get down to minus six um, and I took the fleece off and they were all wilted and I lost majority of them. So these are the plum tomatoes, I've had to buy those. I've got the beefsteak tomatoes here, I've had to buy those. I managed to save half a dozen uh, Alicante tomatoes which are down this side and I've had to buy some more and I've managed to save two black Russian tomatoes which are at, at the back. I've noticed you've got some, is it marigolds in between your plants? What, yeah. What are they for? Yeah. Um, these go in and the the scent that the marigolds um, produce deters aphids so it, it's a good help to stop aphids getting onto your tomato plants. And these are your dahlias? No, 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 they're no, they're, what's they're peppers. Peppers. You just start to see the peppers coming on them now. These are peppers that we bought, but on this side here, these are peppers that we just bought from the supermarket. Cut them into, save some seed, and put them in to see if they grow. Oh, and those are the ones that I said. I yeah. Really. Oh, and they seem that's the best one. I don't know whether that one will take, but I put them in anyway. So what have we lost? Just a couple of seeds. If yeah. it doesn't take. So it just shows you can do anything with yeah. um, seeds. The plum tomatoes are looking very well. I've taken all That's the outer... Although oh, it's the first time we've grown them, isn't it? The plum tomatoes, yeah. We, we've always had Alicante before. But... Although we didn't have much succession with the first lot, did we? No. Last year? Didn't no. Do... Well, at home we've got a polycarbonate greenhouse, which is uh, six by six. But you don't get the temperature inside the polycarbonate greenhouse that you do inside the glass. 
the glass one. It's got an aluminium frame, um, so what we decided to do is grow all the tomatoes and everything in here, which is on the allotment, and all we're doing with a polycarbonate greenhouse is just um, sowing seeds, picking out, bringing them on, then we bring them down to the allotment to plant. Um, but everything seems to be coming as a really good abundance. The temperature in here now, it's, it's 18 degrees, is that? Let's have a look. Yeah, 18.4 degrees in here. Overnight it got down to 13 degrees. And uh, it, during the night it got up to, where are we? 21 degrees. Uh, so That's a good little temperature thing. It is, it? it's got this three and one. 10 quid that was, best 10 quid I've ever spent. Yeah. And just one battery in the back for the digital part, which gives you the reading that's in there now. Yeah. But it was really, really, really overcast on Friday. So I didn't open the greenhouse up, I just opened the, the window. And uh, I didn't come down again until later on in the evening, but exactly got up to 43 degrees inside here because I didn't open the door. So everything had a good water at the base. We don't put any, try not to get any water on the leaves because that stop, starts the When the, the heat mildew. gets to them, it starts to yeah. dry up as well, yeah. And just while I'm sitting here, I can see one or two little side shoots, which we just pull out on there. There's another one here. Yeah, just let me have a look, see what you're doing. Uh, that one there, that's that gonna come out, yeah. yeah. Just take that off. So what, when you take your side shoots off, what does that do? Stop it from well, all that's good. If you leave, if you leave that one in, you'll get another stem like this, right. and that then will start to produce more flowers to produce more fruit. But you'll get less of a quality of fruit on the rest of your plant. So you might as well just have one stalk, one lot of fruit, right, and okay. better quality fruit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've even got a couple of leaks in here. There's uh, one in each corner over the, over around. What my plan is for the greenhouse, mid-August, well normally my tomatoes are a lot higher than this. They're normally up to the up to the sea, up to the roof. But with the temperatures that we've had this year, um, it, it, they're taking a bit to get going. So, but they are doing well. I've got plenty of fruit on them anyway. So. Mid-September, I plan to, to take all of these out, get all these ripened off first, take them all out, and then I'll be planting salads straight in here. So we've got nice salad all over winter, and you can't beat fresh salad on Christmas night. Mm. Put a bit of a spread on and have a good pick. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll leave it there for now, and then we'll get back to putting some leaks in as soon as the rain drops off. Typical British weather, eh? You have me a cup of coffee. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so the rain's gone off a little bit now. So what we're going to do, I'm not taking all of these potatoes out. We'll take them out as we need them or until I need to put anything else in. So all you need for preparing the, the bed to put the leeks in is just your dipper and your rake. So we've just seen how we pull the potatoes out. All we need to do is just rake over the top, like so. You might even come up with some more potatoes, will you or not? <laughs> no, not now, because I've already had my fingers all the way through it. So oh, right, okay. I've probably missed some, but um, they'll grow again next year. Okay, so that, that's all you do for the bed prep for that. And with me dipper, what I'm going to do, if you want to just come around here and see, and furthermore, um, I've taken the side fence down from here and put it round the back because Jeanette has just taken on this plot at the side. I just want to show people a plot on this plot. So we're starting to dig all that over. We've got to dig this, even though we are no dig. It's all over the place. It's rock hard. But that ground hasn't been turned over for nearly six years. So we've just got to level it all out, rake it all over. And then we've got plenty of cardboard in the in the shed there to be able to put down on top and um, start planning where the, the beds are going to go for there but I'm going to be growing all the fruit and Jeanette's going to be growing no sorry Jeanette's going to be growing all the fruit and cut flowers and I'm going to be growing all the, the vegetables get it right Neil 
Yeah, get it right. Okay, so all we do to plant the leeks, put your dibber in, make a nice hole. How far down do you go? You don't go down too far, do you? About an inch? Oh, no, no. I've gone down there about three inches. Three inches? Oh, deeper than that. Yeah. I want these to go down. Like that. There's another one there. And I am walking on the bed, but it doesn't make any difference because compost doesn't compact like soil does. The last one there. So maybe put in four there. In this row, there's one, two, three, four. There's five in this row. Five in the row. So what we do there? These are multi-sown leeks. So there's four or five leeks to each each cell, and these have been growing it at home in the polycarbonate greenhouse. So all we do, they're ready to go in. Push that in. Push that right down, and leave it. I'm not going to cover it up. Push that one in. Right down. Do you have to cover these up because of leek moth and all that? Yeah, they are going to be covered with a, a, a mesh, but first. I should spray them with Bacillus thuringiensis. That right. is a, a natural organic product that kills caterpillars. So when the leek moth does come, but I'm going to net it anyway to try and stop the leek moth as well. So prevention's better than cure. Um, hopefully we, we, we won't lose any leeks like we did last year. This is all you do. And what variety did you see these were? I didn't, it's on the label at home and I've forgotten what the variety <laughs> is, but I will find out and I'll put it in. My memory's terrible. Could you have multi sown these? With these are multi sown. No, I mean with all your other vegetables, in between the vegetables or not? Well, not not in between the potatoes because when we pull these up, we're going they to pull them up as well. Everything through. Right, so. I'm not going to mulch all round. I'm going to leave the whole round round the outside. Just a little rake over. These will all have a good walk. Excuse me, these will all have a good water and then a bit later on we'll get the uh, Bacillus thuringiensis to go. So you do the same process again? Yeah, exactly the same again. I think that will be enough. So if we come back to you when you put them all in? Yeah. Yeah? That'll be alright? Yeah, that's fine. So we'll pause it there and when we've got these in up to here, then we'll come back and just show you what it's like. Okay. Okay, so we've got these leeks in up to where the potatoes are. I'm not going to pull any more potatoes up now because we've still got these potatoes here that we've just taken from that small patch. Bearing in mind we'd already pulled two plants and we've already eaten those. So we've got these leeks in and there's five to a clump. So what we've done, we multi-sow whether it's radishes, onions, leeks, beetroot, whatever. As these grow and they getting ready for harvest we just come along and we we pull out the larger ones and leave the rest to grow so in this little area here five to a clump there's a hundred it doesn't look it though does it <laughs> no no there's a hundred leeks <clears throat> in there like in the onions at the end I've got 64 onions just in two rows mm. um, where before last year it, it took half a pot half that bed rather you know um, if they've been in, in four feet wide beds. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to give these a good watering in, even though it's going to be a lot of rain today. And there's nothing better than young leeks with cauliflower cheese and fresh crusty bread. And you can't beat homegrown. You'll have to do a food vi video next <laughs> on how to cook. <laughs> <laughs>
You might just do that yet. Yeah. Watch your space then. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> might even film us going away in the caravan. <laughs> Which isn't very often this year yeah. with Covid. Okay. So they've all had a good soak and we'll leave those now. I will put a net in over so I've got to put some more tube in. I haven't got any more of these poles so I've got I've got some water pipe which I've got to cut to go over the top and that will just be uh, covering those. But the leak moth, that normally strikes between August and September so these will get going on a dry day. We'll go into hopefully later today if it just dries up. I'll come along and I'll spray it all with Bacillus thuringiensis and uh, that will help to deter the caterpillars for gnawing inside, inside the plant. Last year we had leaks over this side here and uh, we had over 50 leaks and we lost every one. They were, they were really really mushy. But everybody had that though didn't they? they did, there wasn't it's many people that... I don't it's think anybody had a good turn. Nobody did last year, no. Leak and there's a hundred plots on this allotment site and Nobody's had leak moth here before, so last year was the first year that it's devastated everything. So when I found out about the leak moth, when I had to pull all these off last um, October, September, I googled it, found out what it was, found out the what it was to kill the caterpillar, which was Bacillus thuringiensis, and that's exactly the same that we'll be spraying that we'd spray on the um, the brassicas and the onion family. So. Mm, very good. Okay. So if you like what we're doing, um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the notification button so you know exactly when the next video is coming, and there will be another one coming very shortly. Until then, bye.